Merci, Monsieur le Président. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes ici ensemble, en présence des chefs du Tiltcotin, pour reconnaître les actions perpétrées par les gouvernements du passé contre le Tiltcotin et pour exprimer les profonds regrets du gouvernement du Canada pour ces gestes. Today, we come together in the presence of the Chilcotin chiefs to fully acknowledge the actions of past governments committed against the Chilcotin people and to express the Government of Canada's profound regret for those actions. We also come together out of recognition and respect for the Chilcotin nation, a vital partner in Canada's ongoing nation-to-nation -nation effort towards reconciliation. Today, we honor and recognize six Chilcotin chiefs, men who were treated and tried as criminals in an era where both the colonial government and the legal process did not respect the inherent rights of the Chilcotin people and the Chilcotin nation. As the government and the people of Canada continue to come to terms with our colonial past, it is essential that we recognize and support the implementation of the rights of the Chukotin and all Indigenous peoples enshrined in our Constitution. The recognition and implementation of Indigenous rights can wait no longer. And neither should the Chukotin people continue to wait for an apology that is long long overdue. Monsieur le Président, longtemps avant l'arrivée des Européens, les Tilcotin prenaient soin de leur territoire et le protégeaient. Au printemps 1864, les chefs des Tilcotin ont mené une expédition de guerre pour défendre ce territoire. Long before the arrival of Europeans, the Tilcotin people cared for and protected their homelands. In the spring of 1864, the Chilcotin chiefs led a war party in defense of those homelands. The chiefs were attempting to repel a colonial road crew that wanted to build a road through Chilcotin territory without any legal agreement with the Chilcotin nation. The rights of the Chilcotin in people to their land and their right to maintain and uphold their cultural and legal traditions were not considered by the colonial government of the day. As settlers came to the land in the rush for gold, no consideration was given to the needs of the Chilcotin people who were there first. No agreement was made to access their land. No consent was sought. At the same time, along with settlement, came smallpox, which devastated Indigenous communities across the continent, including the Chilcotin. Some reliable historical accounts indicate that the Chilcotin had been threatened with the spread of disease by one of the road workers. And so, faced with these threats, the Chilcotin people took action to defend their territory. After convening a council to declare war, they attacked the road crew near Butte Inlet and removed all settlers from their lands before taking refuge in their territory beyond the reach of the colonial militia. Peu de temps après, l'un des dirigeants de la milice coloniale, William Cox, commissaire de l'or, a envoyé au chef Tulcotin une offrande sacrée de tabac accompagné d'une invitation en vue de discuter les conditions de paix. Le chef de guerre, Clatosin, et ses hommes ont accepté cette rêve. Not long after, one of the leaders of the colonial militia, Gold Commissioner William Cox, sent the Tsukotin chiefs a sacred gift of tobacco and with it an invitation to discuss terms of peace. Head War Chief Klatasain and his men accepted this truth. As a show of goodwill, they rode into the camp to negotiate peace.
instead of being welcomed as leaders and respected warriors, they were arrested, imprisoned, convicted, and killed. On October 26, 1864, five Tsurkotin chiefs were hanged for murder. Head War Chief Klatosain, Chief Biyil, Chief Tela, Chief Takot, and Chief Chesus. They are buried in Quinell, BC. Later, Chief Aun was also hanged. He is buried in New Westminster, BC. Monsieur le Président, Aujourd'hui, notre gouvernement reconnaît ce que le gouvernement colonial de l'époque refusait d'accepter, que ces six chefs étaient des leaders et des guerriers de la nation des Tilcotin et que le peuple Tilcotin qu'ils dirigeaient conservait leurs droits sur un territoire qui n'avait jamais été cédé. Today, our government acknowledges but the colonial government of the day was unwilling to accept that these six chiefs were leaders and warriors of the Chilcotin nation, and that the Chilcotin people they led maintained rights to land that had never been ceded. Even though the colonial government did not recognize these rights, the chiefs acted in accordance with their own laws to defend their territory, their people, and their way of life. They acted as leaders of a proud and independent nation facing a threat from another nation. When they came to meet with colonial officials, they did so on a diplomatic mission, expecting to be treated with dignity and honor. The capture and arrest the colonial government demonstrated a profound lack of respect for the Chilcotin people, as did the refusal to recognize Chilcotin as a nation. Those are mistakes that our government is determined to set right. Their capture and their arrestation by the colonial colonial government profondément de respect for the Chilcotin de même que le refus de reconnaître les Tulcotines comme étant une nation. Ce sont des erreurs que notre gouvernement est déterminé à corriger. We now understand that the treatment of the Tulcotin chiefs represented a betrayal of trust, an injustice that has been carried by the Tulcotin people for more than 150 years even as they have continued to fight for and achieve recognition as the owners and caretakers of their land. Mr. Speaker, today the Tsurkotin people, including the descendants of those six chiefs, continue to live on and care for Tsurkotin lands. They have never stopped fighting to preserve their territory and their culture right up to the historic Supreme Court of Canada decision of June 26, 2014, which recognized Aboriginal title to the Chilcotin nation. The Chilcotin people and their leaders continue to show the same commitment to their land and to their nation that their chiefs did in 1864, pursuing government-to-government -government discussions with the government of British Columbia and the government of Canada with the goal of reconciliation and recognition as a self-determining First Nation. In February 2016, the Tsukotin Nation and British Columbia signed the Nenke Deni Accord, a significant step towards this goal. Less than a year later, in January 2017, we signed a letter of understanding between the Government of Canada and the Tsilkotin Nation, marking another step towards reconciliation and recognition of our new nation-to-nation -nation relationship. Mr. Speaker, we know 
that the exoneration and the apology we are making today on behalf of Canada cannot, by itself, repair the damage that has been done. But it is my sincere hope that these words will allow for greater healing as Canada and the Tsukotin nation continue on the shared journey towards reconciliation. At the same time, we would do well to acknowledge that for the Chilcotin people, the events of 1864 and 1865 are not confined to history. As a people, in particular the mothers that have passed this history down through generations, the Chilcotin have carried these events with them for more than a century and a half. The actions of the government of the day have had a deep and lasting impact on the relationship between the Tsukotin nation and Canada. Think of all we might have gained, Mr. Speaker, if proper relations between our nations had been established and maintained. Think of what it might have meant for the Tsukotin people to have true self-determination over their own future. Think of the economic opportunities that might have been realized. Think of what Canada would have gained had we been open those many years ago to learning about the rich culture and traditions of the Chilcotin people and finding for it a lasting place within the fabric of Canada. For the loss of that time and opportunity, we are truly sorry. In the measure we have the power, Nous devons rectifier les erreurs du passé. Donc, pour signifier de manière décisive notre engagement envers la réconciliation, nous confirmons sans équivoque que le chef Clatosain, le chef Billil, le chef Tella, le chef Takut, le chef Chesus et le chef Aaron sont entièrement exonérés de tout crime et de tout méfait. As much as it is in within our power to do so, we must right the wrongs of the past. And so, as an important symbol of our commitment to reconciliation, we confirm without reservation that Chief Klatosain, Chief Biyil, Chief Telad, Chief Takut, Chief Chesus, and Chief Aoun are fully exonerated of any crime or wrongdoing. of Chief Klatosain. They meant war, not murder. <coughs> we recognize that these six chiefs were leaders of a nation, that they acted in accordance with their laws and traditions, and that they are well regarded as heroes of their people. I very much look forward to visiting the declared Aboriginal title lands of the Chilcotin Nation this summer at the invitation of the Chilcotin leadership to deliver the statement of exoneration directly to the Chilcotin people who have fought so long and so hard to have the commitment and sacrifice of their war chiefs recognized. I am impatient to visit the territory visited by the title of Propriété Autochtone of the Nation of Chilcotin this summer, at the invitation of the dirigeants of Chilcotin to remet in main propre la déclaration d'exonération pour laquelle les Chilcotines se sont battus depuis si longtemps et avec tant d'énergie en vue de reconnaître le dévouement et les sacrifices de leur chef de guerre. Acknowledging and apologizing for fast, past mistakes is an important part of renewing the relationship between Canada and the Chilcotin nation. 
more hard work lies ahead. To, can you, to, to continue to work together in positive ways that affirm the government's respect and recognition of the rights of the Chilcotin people. To build a partnership that will support the Chilcotin people as they continue to preserve and strengthen their culture and traditions and govern and care for a territory as a flourishing nation. To embrace the Chilcotin nation and its rich contributions to the country that we all call home. To live up to the spirit of cooperation between our peoples, which has always been the unique strength and promise of Canada from its earliest days. As we honor the courage and sacrifice shown by the Chilcotin chiefs 154 years ago, we fulfill that strength and that promise. And we do it as we always should have, in partnership with respect together. Thank you. Sechan Aliyah.